everyone, welcome to a new video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Irit and I'm a watercolor artist. I think watercolors are the most magical of mediums. And today I'm just going to play with some color. So the intention was to paint uh, something new. I was in the mood to paint some cherry blossom which i have painted in the past but not as much as i would have liked and i find them beautiful and i find the colors beautiful but i haven't painted them in a few years and my style has changed a lot since then um, so i am excited to see what i can come up with however on the way i got lost with some color play I thought about maybe bringing in some new colors and I wanted to find a color story that makes my heart sing. <laughs> yes, I'm being dramatic. <laughs> anyway, I'm using my new stamp set, which is hopefully on pre-order or will soon be able to, you'll soon be able to pre-order it. Uh, I will leave all the details below. I'm just filming this uh, a bit ahead of time. So I'm using the um, a few of the stamps in my stamp set and this Cuddy logbook, which is really fantastic for keeping a reference of colors and color mixtures and combinations. That's what I use it for. The paper is pretty bad, I'm sorry to say. And actually a funny side effect of using, I'm guessing the solvent ink with my stamps, you want to use a waterproof ink because we will be watercoloring over it. And since the whole point here is to see the colors and mix the colors, I can't have the ink um, you know, muddying them. So for all of these purposes, I highly recommend using a waterproof ink. I'm using a gray stays on. I am not a stamper and mostly I just try not to get ink all over my clothes. I don't mind that. I really like the kind of messy look. So you can see my stamping is not perfect. The stamps are great. It's not the stamps, it's the user. <laughs> and for a better result, I for like a crisper, uh, more intense uh, color. I use the, um, what's it called? The Onyx Black, the VersaFine. Is, is that how it's called? Yeah, the VersaFine Onyx Black ink, which I show in the stamp uh, introduction uh, video in the stamp set where, video, where I talk about the stamp sets and all the stamps. So here I'm just using a few of them. Um, but yeah, you can see on the left side, the previous page has stamped images on it and I'm pretty sure I used the VersaFine ink and I think because the paper is so thin it uh, sip, sip, seeped through a bit and uh, you know how like alcohol based, oh that's Ella's hand, <laughs> uh, alcohol based things kind of bleed through so I think the ink did that and it resists a little bit the colors when I put them down on the left side which you'll see I don't mind that but of course if you don't want these effects interesting accidental effects <laughs> you should probably use watercolor uh, paper for these um, you know color playtime things so I brought in a few new colors. You can see I'm using my go-to palette, which you can also buy now in my shop. And um, it comes with this clear insert, with, uh, which I actually usually I don't use. I just use the, the um, you know, other side of the palette for mixing. But this was a really good, I mean, first of all, it looks good on camera that you can see all the mixing. <laughs> but it was also uh, a good way to just try some new colors. So what I have there is Holbein Opera, and that is the color that I swatched on the top right corner. And then I have the Shinhan Pass Bright Red, which you can't see on camera just how bright it is. It's kind of a fluorescent red. I was really, really into that color. Then I kind of moved on and I thought maybe I'll bring it back. I, 
I'm really, I want to create uh, an interesting color scheme for the cherry blossoms, which, you know, hopefully I'll paint. But even if I don't, just playing with colors and seeing what I can come up with is always fun. So I swatched the opera from Holbein. I like Holbein's opera because it's not as like garish as the Daniel Smith version. Now that doesn't mean that um, the mixtures will be nice. It could be that actually the Daniel Smith uh, version can make prettier mixes. I think opera is uh, an, a really interesting color for mixtures because it brings that, you know, fluorescence <laughs> into your mixes. Of course, it is fugitive and not light fast. Um, so use it at your own peril. But um, yeah, it's it's a lovely color, this opera I like. The Daniel Smith one I can't stand on its own. This one is really lovely. It's kind of a warmer version of my beloved uh, Bright Rose from Holbein as well. Another fugitive color. And you can see that one on the bottom left corner there uh, in my logbook. And you can see these two next to each other, how much uh, bluer the bright rose is compared to the opera. So what I'm doing in my lovely mixing stamp, which is which has these uh, spaces, is seeing what colors I can create with opera rose and one of my favorite orangey yellows right now, the Lucas Naples yellow red. And I do think the mixtures are lovely, especially the ones that have a lot of opera rose and just a little bit of the Naples yellow red. Uh, you can see it in the this mixing um, scale. I don't know how to call it. <laughs> um, it's, it's just this lovely kind of corally color, which I'm really, really into these days. So now I'm showing you my swatch card stamp. And I didn't make a swatch of all of my colors just yet. I think just slowly as I paint with them, I will add them. So I'm adding now uh, Opera from Holbein. And of course, this is a fugitive color. So I'm only going to black out one star. And the swatch card has place to write the name, the maker, and then all of the different qualities of your paint. Uh, some of them are on the tube and then others you can find on the brand's website. Um, the tube doesn't uh, say everything, but it usually, almost always, I want to say, has the pigments <laughs> on it which in this case, if I'm not mistaken, it's BV10 and PR122. So really, really lovely pink. If you are not, um, if you don't care about light fastness, if you're okay with painting with fugitive colors, you know, especially in your sketchbooks or something like that, um, this is a gorgeous opera. So this is kind of where I'm starting. Um, I think if I paint the cherry blossoms, then my main, you know, my focal point will be the flowers, the blooms, and then the rest is in the background. So I really want kind of a beautiful, vibrant, pinkish color for those blooms. They're mostly white or light pink. So I think, um, it can be, it will be really fun to play with it. But um, also just playing with color is fun in my book, <laughs> in my logbook. And I, you know, whatever I learn from here, I can apply and implement in any project. Looking at the screen now, ugh, I don't like that yellow at all. This is Nicolazo yellow. It's actually one of my favorite yellows, but Today, I'm just not feeling it. It's just way too greenish or kind of, you know, earthy green gold vibes it's giving me. So I think I'm more into the the warm orangey yellows these days. And I do like to include a transparent kind of vibrant yellow in my paintings. And these days, most days, it's quinacridone gold as opposed to nickel azo yellow. So I always kind of switch my, you know, taste, it changes, and having my palette with so many colors uh, really works for me because I don't have to like switch things around all the time or squeeze new paint all the time and then, um, you know, not use it or it takes up uh, 
real estate in my palette. So this palette works extremely well for me. And yeah, now I'm using my little color wheel stamp to just get an idea of how Opera from Holbein mixes with Schmincke's Naples Yellow. Naples Yellow, I think, is another color like Nicolazo Yellow that I was completely obsessed with. And I don't know how many times I already refilled my well in my palette. Um, but lately I'm just more into the Naples yellow red from Lucas, which you can see I have hit pan on it. I don't know if you can see it. It's it's I have a full pan in my palette and I'm running very low, which means I should probably order uh, a new one. So not connected. Um, Brexit. It turns out that <laughs> Austria was very efficient and quick with um charging customs for anything coming from the UK. I may have ordered <laughs> a bit of yarn <laughs> and, <laughs> and then discovered that I have to pay customs. So uh, no more shopping in the UK for me, uh, just because I have to pay customs for anything above 25 euros and a handling fee of 10 euros. So that usually makes any little price difference, just not worth it. And most things I can find in um, the European Union, mostly from Germany, that's where uh, a lot of the stuff is. So I'll probably order, I mean, Lucas is a German brand anyway, so I guess it's okay, <laughs> it makes sense. But I'll probably, um, I sadly, I don't think I'll be able to order from Jackson's anymore, it just won't be worth it for me. And I'm pretty sure most of what they have, I can also find from uh, Gestelke or Bosna. I think, no, nah, Bosna, I haven't had luck with their um, online shop. It's not very user friendly. But uh, Gestelke, hopefully, I'm not butchering the name. I can't exactly remember the spelling. Never mind. Um, so that's probably where I'll be ordering from. And I will be ordering a big tube. I mean, Lucas has 20 mil tubes of. Naples yellow red because I just love that color. I think it's basically if memory serves it's just orange with a white pigment but I I just love how it looks and I love the mixtures I get from it with uh, my kind of bright pinks that I like to use so it has been sorry it has been I said sorry to the microphone because I hit it. <laughs> it has been a go-to uh, color for me in the last few months. I just love it. So you can see there's a lot of like yellow and pink here and I'm just trying different things. Right now looking at the screen, what speaks to me the most is definitely that combination of Naples yellow, red and uh, Holbein's Opera. I think that would be beautiful and then I can add white if I want to or add more water and, um, you know, kind of tone it down a little. But I'm just playing around and seeing what happens when I mix Shinhan Pass Bright Red with some Daniel Smith Olive Green. As you can see, I have different uh, brands in my palette. I see no reason to limit myself to one brand. I don't think there's any one brand that does everything perfectly. And it's not even about, you know, perfect. I mean, when you get to this level, in my opinion, of, you know, artist grade paints, they're all really, really good. But some brands just, you know, formulate a color better than others. And then some brands just make a version that I personally like more than others. So, you know, it can be, for example, an opera that is a bit cooler and less garish, but, you know, both are just as fugitive and <laughs> will fade in time just as well. So, um, yeah, so it's about personal preference and kind of finding those perfect colors in each brand. And I really, what I love to do is, you know, make my, uh, what do you call it? Like all time hits, your best picks, whatever, everything in one palette. Um, so I can use what I love the most from every brand that I want. Okay, now I'm doing a little auditioning just to kind of see which color 
jumps at me, which combinations really speak to me. And this was a little bit uh, difficult. I'm not sure. I mean, sometimes when I get kind of stuck at this stage, I will just start painting and just make sure that I'm connecting and enjoying my colors as I'm painting. Maybe audition them before they go on the, the painting. Uh, just to see that, you know, they're giving me good vibes. <laughs> because for me personally, what I found is if I put down uh, in my painting colors that I'm not absolutely loving at that moment, I'm usually bound to be disappointed. And on the other hand, if I use colors that I really, really love and I'm really feeling and it's working with all my color cravings and everything, um, I'm usually happy with what I make, even if, you know, technically there are some issues. So, um, yeah, that's that's something that I personally take my time and pay attention to, uh, to get that right, uh, because it's kind of a, a recipe for success, or at least a recipe for that feel-good <laughs> um, moment. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Wisteria. You can see that circle stamp that I filled in the spots uh, just because it's fun and I can uh, write down also the colors. So I have there uh, a bit of Wisteria at the top of the left page and I love Wisteria. It's by Daniel Smith. It's a really lovely color, um, but I don't really like it in mixtures. I really prefer the effect of cobalt violet. And so most days cobalt violet will make make it into the, you know, painting um, as opposed to wisteria. So it's a bit it's a bit of problematic color for me, um, wisteria, although I do really, really love it uh, out of the tube. So I decided to fill my last little quarter of a big color wheel there with mixtures of Cascade Green and by Daniel Smith and uh, Shinhan's Bright Red. Uh, these are pretty complementary colors, so you can see they kind of neutralize each other. I mean, they still have a lot of um, blue in them, and so the the mixtures tend to be more on that kind of purplish vibe but um, yeah it's uh, there are some interesting mixes I can't say I was um, you know completely into this color combo but uh, it's good to have them to have it there recorded for future reference maybe another day I will feel differently and I hope that, you know, I'll continue <laughs> that this actually <laughs> becomes uh, a painting or will be used in a painting. But even if it's not, then I just love these pages and they're always fun. And I make sure to write down the colors so that I know in the future, um, you know, which colors those were and I can be inspired and um, use these color combinations in another painting if I feel like it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out all the links and information below and I will see you soon in another video. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!